Uh, let's go back to 1988 to the Senate testimony of James Hansen, where he presented these three diagrams. The red and the orange are diagrams that says if we keep producing CO2 at the rate we are, that's going to be the temperature record. Well, we have continued to produce CO2 to our great advantage, I might add. But then he added the yellow line that said if we have draconian cuts in energy use, we can hold the temperature down to what the yellow line is. So this is testimony before the United States Senate. That's a hypothesis. That's all that is. That's a model hypothesis from a model some, that came from someone's brain. 22 years later, we can test that hypothesis with real data. And here is what actually happened, that the observations don't even approach the one with draconian cuts. The bottom line here is that Jim Hansen's and essentially all climate models that we've been able to test show too much sensitivity to carbon dioxide. Put carbon dioxide in the model, the model temperature goes up. The real world doesn't quite work that way from the information we've gathered. Well, that was 20 years ago, but what about current models? I'm going to skip this one. It's kind of complicated. Let's just look at this one. The red and the orange are two different ways in which climate model trends can be uh, uh, averaged. The bottom uh, axis tells you, let's start a trend in 1979, 1984, and so on, and end the trend in uh, 2008, 2008. So the first trend is about 30 years, 1984 is 25 years, and so on. We have three estimates of global temperature there, one being ours. And as you can see, there is a huge difference between what observations have shown over the last 30 years and what climate models have indicated should have happened in the last 30 years. Uh, these are significantly different, as you can imagine. And it tells you again that these models are just too sensitive to carbon dioxide. Um, this is another statement of that uh, very same thing. In fact, if you go down to where I live in the southeastern United States, We've actually cooled in the last 115 years. We used to have a citrus industry in South Alabama. We don't anymore because it's just too cold. Uh, but every climate model we've been able to find has shown that it should have warmed in the last 100 years in the southeastern U.S. Uh, here's what the temperatures in Alabama have actually done in the past uh, uh, period. And you can see it's been uh, pretty, uh, uh, it's downward. This is our satellite data set that we produce uh, from microwave instruments on polar orbiting satellites, showing that there is a trend, but it's basically half of what climate models said should have happened in the last 32 years. Now let's go to California, one of my favorite states, because I was born there, but also because they tend to try to be out in front on all the issues of climate change and, and really are inflicting a lot of harm on their own economy and don't actually realize it, but that's what's happening. They used to have eight automobile assembly plants in California. The last one closed last April. It's just too expensive to build anything in California, so industry is left. Well, what you see is a projection of temperatures for California. The mountains show much more warming than the valleys in California, and you already know the answer to this, that it's the valley that shows the warming because of greenhouse, uh, because of surface development. Where greenhouse gases are supposed to have the impact on the mountains in the blue line there, no change at all in the last 110 years or so. So you cannot find, when someone makes an assertion about how climate change is supposed to be occurring, I build a data set, we can't find that assertion verified. In fact, one of the latest assertions about California is the snowfall in the Sierras is going away. Our Secretary of Energy said, He's looking at an 80% decline in snow cover in the Sierras in the next 100 years. I built a data set to check that out. For the last 100 years, it was published, I think it will be this month, in Energy and Environment, and this is the result. There has been no change in snowfall in the southern Sierras. In fact, there's actually a slight upward trend. It's not significant, but it is an upward trend. Now, this is probably the last kind of complicated science-y diagram I have. This is really the crux of the matter. I've said a number of times climate models are too sensitive to, to CO2. In other words, as CO2 is increased in the models, they show a lot of warming. And here's what it boils down to. CO2 is increasing in the atmosphere. No question about that. 
On the left is the effect of clouds and water vapor, much larger. The variation of clouds and water vapor has a much larger impact on temperature than CO2 increases. So the question is, what will that do? What feedback will that occur or, or allow in the climate system? Climate models, if you can see the red arrow up there, say that when you add CO2, the clouds and water vapor add more warming. So it's not just CO2 adding warming. The big warming is due to the fact clouds shrink in climate models and let the sun heat the earth. That's the fundamental way climate models heat up the earth. It's not the CO2 alone. It's the fact the clouds shrink and allow the sun to bake the earth more. What happens, though, if the clouds did something else? That blue arrow, suppose the clouds mitigated any forcing that went on. Well, that's a testable hypothesis. My colleague Roy Spencer will be having his third paper on this topic, published this uh, uh, next month or so, actually looked at that. Okay, let me, there we go. A little bit hard to see, and the axis is going to be backwards from what you think. To the left is a climate that's very sensitive. To the right is a climate that's resilient or pretty insensitive. With 1,100 climate model simulations from 18 different climate IPCC climate models, they show on the left the distribution that indicates climate models have positive feedback. They are to the left of that bar, which is neutral feedback. All of them, 1,100. When he actually did observations with the satellites, he found a negative feedback. In other words, whenever there was a forcing that made the temperature rise, the clouds expanded to reflect sunlight, a negative feedback bringing the Earth back to a normal temperature. So it was like a thermostat, that the clouds act like thermostats. Here is a fundamental issue that is being argued about vehemently right now. Observations show negative feedback, Models show positive feedback. You got to get that one right, at least in the sign, before you can start in, uh, integrating for 100 years into the future. Okay, now let's go on to a little bit less sciencey thing, but still about numbers. What about cold regions and polar bears? Here's a 1,500 years of uh, temperatures in the Arctic. You can see that. Uh, yes, it has warmed in the Arctic because the 19th century was the coldest period in the Arctic, some people say in 10,000 years. I mean, the 19th century was cold in the Arctic, and it's warmed a bit since then. But when you look back a 1,000 years ago, you see a period that was much warmer than it is today in the Arctic. And uh, let's go to Greenland, and you can see here is 10,000 years now of record. And uh, on the right, that first bump there is that 1,000 years ago warm period. But if you look back... Uh, uh, Four to 8,000 years ago, minus two to minus 600,000 there, 4,000 years in which um, Greenland was much warmer than it is today. Much warmer than it is today. And the key point I want to make here is that Greenland did not melt. With 4,000 years of much warmer temperatures than today, Greenland did not melt. I actually presented this in a federal case in Vermont. As you can see, that period of warmth. Now, let's go to another ice place, uh, Kilimanjaro, and you already know the answer here. Is the upper left is the temperature record. Temperatures are not rising there in East Africa, Kilimanjaro, though the snow is going away, no question about that. The lower left diagram shows from 1880 the rapid decline of snow cover in East Africa, but most of it happened before greenhouse gases could have had any influence at all, indicating tropical glaciers kind of do what they want to do, they are terrible thermometers when, when you think about it that way. They are more uh, susceptible to changes in um, uh, circulation and cloud coverage and things like that. How about, let's go all the way to the South Pole, Antarctica. The Arctic ice cover for a 30-year period reached its lowest level in the summer, September 15, uh, 2007. Two weeks later, the Antarctic sea ice cover expanded to its largest extent ever. In the, in the record. Yet that was not reported on the front page of all the newspapers as the story two weeks prior that the Arctic had reached its minimum story. In fact, many times in the last three years since 2007, when you add southern hemisphere plus northern hemisphere sea ice, it's been above average because of how much sea ice is there in the, so in, in the southern hemisphere. 